let's roll into um, some of the chemicals that mimic estrogen. So you kind of have a better idea of where to look and how to, what to avoid. Now it's interesting in our world today, if we're talking about food-based chemicals, we're being exposed now to about 3,000 new chemicals in the food. So we're talking about food. And many of these chemicals are known estrogen mimickers. So they can mimic estrogen. Now, this is just in the food. So I'm not, we haven't even gotten started yet on environmental chemicals. So there's about 30,000 chemicals that we're exposed to through air, through water, you know, through industrialization and production that have also estrogen mimicking types of effects. And so, you know, we add all that together, there's over 30,000, about 33,000 chemicals that we're currently being exposed to, many of which have been identified is what I was talking about earlier over here as xenoestrogens, right? And we talk about chemical exposure. So let's talk about what some of those are. One of the big ones are your plastics, your plastics. So, and the reason why is they contain a, a compound called a phthalate. A phthalate is a, is a plasticizer. It's a petrochemical derived plastic that is designed to make things softer and bendable and pliable. So plastics, the plastic, think of the plastic industry. So think about this in terms of plastic plates and bowls and forks and knives and spoons. Think of this as plastic Tupperware. So all those different plastics that you might store your food in or heat your food up on, um, those are potential problems. So th again, plastic water bottles, probably the place where a lot of people get their exposure. Now, I know you're seeing right now, what you're seeing is, is this term BPA-free. BPA-free, BPA is one type of phthalate. Bisphenol A is only one type of phthalate. There are lots of phthalates. And just because it says BPA-free doesn't mean you should use it. I see this all the time in people that carry around their plastic BPA-free plastic water bottles. Look, throw that thing in the garbage. Do yourself a favor. Don't allow it to leak estrogens, artificial estrogens into your body. Throw it away. Get you a glass one. Get you a stainless steel one made in the U.S., not made in China. Um, get you a good stainless steel or a good glass uh, bottle that you can drink your beverages, your, your water out of, preferably your beverage is water, uh, because, because a lot of these other beverages are loaded with excessive carbohydrate refined sugar, right? So preferably your beverage is water, preferably you're not drinking it out of plastic because that plastic's going to leach phthalates into the water and it's going to create, uh, again, a xenoestrogen dump into your bloodstream. We also see, though, cosmetics. So ladies, if you're wearing makeups, cosmetics, they contain phthalates, they contain xenoestrogens. Check your brand. Not all brands do, but many do. Um, we talked about this already, but food storage. We've also got other things. Uh, flame retardants. So now this you're not going to have so much control over because when they produce mattresses, they soak them in a flame retardant. When they make curtains for a house, it's soaked in a flame retardant. When they're producing carpets and wood flooring and other things, building materials, they spray them with flame retardants like bromine or brominated substances that um, the whole premise of this is to prevent it, them from catching fire. And this includes clothing. So maybe you're buying new clothing at the store. Like the best thing that you can do is wash before you wear. A lot of people will buy new clothes and then they won't wash them. They'll wear them first. And that, that's, again, that's an example of how you might get some of these flame retardants directly on your skin and mask, creating a xenoestrogen-like effect. So you're going shopping, make sure you wash those clothes before you wear them. Now, one of the other places that we're going to find a lot of exposure to estrogen mimicking chemicals is we're going to get it in pesticide. Pesticides, and fungicides and herbicides. So think of it as our modern farming practices dump a ton of this stuff onto the food. Now, how many of you raise your hand if you want to eat your food with chemicals all over it? Hopefully nobody raises their hand. But if you're not buying organic, you're getting a lot more pesticide herbicide exposure. Again, these things are mimicking estrogen, can contribute to an estrogen domination type of scenario where it creates health issues for you. So buy organic kind of the solution here 
to avoid this problem. And so this goes back to how many of you are eating out? Like when you're eating out, a lot of people will eat out and they'll say, well, I select the healthy menu options when I eat out. I eat the salad. Yeah, guess what? The salad leaf is soaked in sugar. And, uh, and if it's not organic, it's got pesticide on it. So now you've got, you know, refined carbohydrate soaked, pesticide soaked lettuce leaf. That lettuce is no longer really good for you. So again, if you're eating out and you're not eating and you're not supporting like farm to table organic restaurants, then my advice is eat at home. You'll save money. You'll also save health and you'll add years to your life. So pesticides, herbicides, flame retardants, food storage, cosmetics, plastics, any type of plastic container. And then we have another group uh, that many people are guilty of, and that's the scented candles, the scented glade plugins, the scented Febreze, all that garbage that people spray or run in their house to make the bad smells not smell bad because they're masking it with chemical smells that, that have fragrances and aromas. These things you're breathing straight into your bloodstream because it's coming right into the olfactory nerve, hits your brain and then hits your bloodstream. So a lot of these fragrant based compounds, so you get in a you know, I, the worst thing when I travel, I get in an Uber car and they've got those Glade plugins in the air and they're just blowing it all over you. It's the worst thing. Those, those chemicals, remember, are, can mimic estrogen. You want to avoid them at, if at all possible. So use things instead of using those chemicals, use things like natural essential oils um, that can still provide a nice aroma to your home, but don't actually overwhelm uh, your body with artificial chemicals that mimic estrogen. Additionally, household cleaners. So, you know, you should, if you haven't already, you should look at your household cleaners because a lot of them, many of the chemicals in them also mimic estrogen and go toward natural options. Citrus-based options are a good option for a number of your household cleaners, your dishwashing, your soaps, your detergents, etc. So, you know, get those things out. And for those of you who haven't visited Gluten-Free Society, it's my foundation, you can check out, we have a list of a lot of these different uh, companies and, and products where they're selling alternatives to some of these things. You should go check those out if you're kind of scrambling and you don't know where to begin. We've got a list on Gluten-Free Society for you to help avoid that. So these are the big areas, the big kind of categorical areas where you're going to get exposure to chemicals that actually mimic estrogen. And again, we don't want that as females. Remember, the higher levels of estrogen you have, the greater risk of developing breast cancer. Some people say, why is breast cancer on the rise to such a great degree? This is one of the big reasons. We're being bombarded by xenoestrogens in our current modern environments. And look, the food manufacturers don't care. The chemical manufacturers, the companies that produce all this stuff, they really don't care. They're just trying to produce a product. They don't want to pull their products off the market because they're contributing to illness. They want to keep selling them. They don't want people to know that their products are estrogen uh, mimickers. They just want to keep selling. They want to keep their business model going the way that it's going. You know, you just have to, as a consumer, make an intelligent decision about whether you're going to want to support that while promoting a detriment to your health. So these, again, these are the big chemical exposures where we're going to get things that mimic estrogen. Let's talk next a little bit about some of the foods, some of the foods that um, can actually mimic estrogen. Now, I'm going to start by saying this list, it's a short list. It's not a comprehensive list. These are just some of the big ones. But it's also to say that sometimes a food that mimics estrogen, so foods that have natural estrogens, these are called phytoestrogens, P-H-Y-T-O, phytoestrogen. So if it comes from food, that's typically the derivative name that it's given is a phytoestrogen. Phytoestrogens are not necessarily bad. Now, if you're using a lot of soy, and you're struggling with symptoms of estrogen dominance, and I see this often with vegans, um, where they're eating a lot of soy replacement products, soy meat-based products and soy you know, textured vegetable protein-like products, where they're creating an estrogen dominance. Um, so it can be a bad problem, but, but some phytonutrients can actually have healthy beneficial effects for people who have low estrogen. So again, if you don't fall in the estrogen domin dominance category, but maybe you have low estrogen, then some of these other foods might be helpful. Now, again, I don't recommend soy um, as, a, as a food source. If you Again, if you read No Grain, No Pain, you'll know that, that soy is one of the kind of the taboo foods that I tell people to avoid. 
unless it's fermented um, soy and unless your gut is completely healthy, I'd recommend that you avoid it. Now, the other reason I'd say avoid soy is because it's most of it, 99% of it is produced that is genetically modified and it's loaded with pesticides and herbicides. So, we, you know, you don't want to get that in. But if you've got an organic tofu because you're lacking estrogen and your gut's working really, really well, then th that could be an option. Flax is another one. The lignans and flax have estrogen mimicking activity. This is some of the fiber in flax that can be beneficial. Sesame is another one. And so are apricots and peaches. So these things all have mild, very mild estrogenic phytonutrient properties that can mimic estrogen. So again, if you're estrogen dominant, these are probably not going to be great food options for you until you get the estrogen dominance under control. So again, those foods are very, very common and, and uh, very commonly eaten and can create problems. So you just have to be careful. Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.